Summertime is becoming but a distant memory, and soon our thoughts will turn from going to the beach to chugging pumpkin spice lattes out of an Ugg boot neck deep in a pile of leaves. But what do you do after your fall of entry-level coffee? You sit down on the couch and you watch one of the awesome new shows coming your way this fall. But with an ever-increasing amount of channels, what new shows are actually worth your time? Don't worry, today on The Dan Cave, I'm gonna tell you all about the fall's best new TV. Atlanta. The Donald Glover-shaped hole in your heart caused by Troy's departure from Community in 2013 can now be filled. Now on its surface, Glover's new FX comedy is about two cousins who are trying to make it big in the Atlanta rap scene in order to give their families a better life. But beneath that exterior is a funny, honest, and frankly surreal experience. It talks about race, it talks about struggle, and most importantly, it makes you feel something. And usually that feeling is uproarious laughter. And I mean, just honestly, it's just so good to have Don Glover back on TV. Startup. Now, many of you know Crackle as the home of cinematic treasures like Joe Dirt 2. Martin Freeman, of all people, plays an FBI agent investigating a cryptocurrency startup funded by drug money. And what follows looks bloody, sordid, and extremely up my alley. Seriously, Martin Freeman is like a super badass in this one. It's weird. Better Things. Chances are you already know Pamela Adlon as the voice of Bobby Hill, or maybe from her recurring role on Louie. But after Better Things, you'll know her as a force of frickin' nature in this excellent show about a divorced actress trying to raise her three daughters all by herself. Created with Louis C.K., you can guarantee this could be the most uncomfortably funny show since the comeback. And if you've seen the comeback, you know it's gonna be cringe-tacular. I mean, hell, I am like already squirming in anticipation. High maintenance. Now what started as a Vimeo series about a dude delivering weed to weirdos in New York City is now a TV show on HBO about a dude delivering weed to weirdos in New York City. I mean, it's it's really transcended the medium. Now, if you've ever been to a dispensary, you'll know they're basically Pokemon lures that attract Craigslist users, except this time, it's one man delivering that sweet kush to a bunch of goofs at their homes, where they do weird home stuff. So go ahead, sink into your couch and make sure you don't puff puff pass on this. Make good choices. Son of Zorn. Now, what if He-Man got his freak on in the real world, Roger Rabbit style, and made it with a human lady? Well, what if that also ended in tears, leaving He-Man with an ex-wife and a teenage son living in Orange County? That is the idea behind Son of Zorn, the new show from producers Phil Lord and Chris Miller. It follows the adventures of the animated hero of the island of Zephyria, who's trying to reconnect with his live-action family. <laughs> And you thought you had daddy issues. You might call him, talk to someone, anything. Like, look, look, talking helps. Luke Cage. Sweet Christmas. Every trailer for Marvel's Luke Cage looks better than the last. I cannot wait for this. The latest Marvel series coming to Netflix follows Harlem's unbreakable badass, the hero sometimes known as Power Man, Luke Cage, as he tries to clean up his old neighborhood. Now, what you can expect is a gritty crime drama, but a gritty crime drama backed by some of the best hip hop ever made. And the best news, there's hallways galore, and where there's hallways, there are asses to be kicked. That's the first thing I know about hallways. Westworld. Jonathan Nolan's TV adaptation of Westworld is about a high-tech theme park full of hyper-realistic androids where consumers can go to live out their wildest fantasies, including banging robots. Honestly, they should just call this to Android's Dream of Electric Skate and be done with it. But I guess that it undermined the ethical questions about consciousness and artificial intelligence. Oh well, whatever, fine. Next time, Jonathan Nolan, call me. Timeless. Supernatural creator Eric Kripke and The Shield creator Sean Ryan have joined forces for Timeless, a show where a criminal steals a time machine and goes back in time to change the course of American history, steering the country towards a metaphorical iceberg. Then, it's up to the unlikely trio of a history professor, a soldier, and a scientist to also travel back in time to save the day. And oh sh**, you guys, they are literally traveling through time to make America great again. Wow. What? <laughs> Gilmore Girls, A Year in the Life. Look, I've never seen this show, but my coworkers, especially Alicia Lutz and Rachel Hine, are losing their GD minds over this. So maybe the return to Stars Hollow will be worth the wait. I mean, you know, something, something Rory, coffee, boys are crazy. Oh my God, fast talking. Uh, you'll watch it. Dirk Gently's Holistic Detective Agency. Based on the Douglas Adams novel of the same name, Dirk Gently follows the adventures of, well, 
Dirk, gently a time-traveling, holistic detective who uses the fundamental interconnectedness of all things to solve crimes alongside his unwilling sidekick Todd, played by Elijah Wood. Now, a lot of you for years have been asking for a crossover between Doctor Who and Sherlock. Guys, this is that, but it's just one show in different characters. This is Doctor Who-lock to a T. It looks great, and I can't wait to see it. The Walking Dead. Do you really need me to tell you to watch The Walking Dead? No, you don't. And that, my friends, is just the tip of the televised iceberg. For our complete list of must-see television, head on over to Nerdist.com to see what I compiled along with our managing editor, Alicia Lutz. But tell me, what shows are you most excited to see? What others would you add to this list? Let me know in the comments below. And while you're there, give me an Emmy-worthy thumbs up. Be sure to like and subscribe or else you might miss next week's show when we talk about the story of a child raised in the jungle who meets an aristocratic woman who teaches him the joys of roller skating in a mystical nightclub in The Legend of Tarzanadu. Until next time, keep on digging. Let's open up the old mailbag, shall we? At Info Show asks, do you think Marvel will revert back to their old status quo a la Rebirth? I dislike what Marvel's doing. Any recommends? Look, all status quos eventually return to where they came from, but this one's gonna be here for a while, so why not enjoy it? In the meantime, why not check out Tom King's The Vision? It's some of the best sci-fi out there right now. Can't recommend it enough. At Obadiah Zach asks, what's up with Highlander 3? No idea, man. The Huntsman Winter Wars director Cedric Nicholas Troyan is attached to direct, and Dave Bautista is rumored to play the villain. But why, I think the real question is, why are there three Highlanders when there can only be one? At DodgerBlue88 asks, any suggestions for K-pop bands? Seems like a lot to choose from. <laughs> You're right, there's a literal ton of K-pop bands out there. For some quick picks, I'd say check out Girls' Generation, Big Bang, Infinite, and Bestie. But tell me, what's your favorite K-pop? Someone hopefully like overlooked a little under the radar, know my picture a little mainstream. Let us know in the comments below, and I'll see you guys next time.